Hi folks, Mythicody in here. Today I want to chat about the latest Unearthed Arcana from Wizards of the Coast. This is a chonky document at 77 pages, it includes seven classes, the Bard, the Cleric, the Druid, the Monk, the Paladin, Ranger, and the Rogue. So first off, it's good to see them taking feedback and reworking the classes to improve them or at least to attempt to improve them from the 2014 versions. WotC has had many missteps in the past year, but they are moving forward with large drops on the UA series. That being said, I do think Wizards of the Coast is missing a real opportunity by refusing to call this a new edition and working on that premise. You are so stubborn. Everyone online tends to agree, calling it the 2024 fifth edition player's handbook instead of 5.5 or sixth or whatever else they could have called it is really holding them back from making some meaningful changes. You're afraid of change. They're so oddly focused on making classes backwards compatible with the 2014 counterparts, it is completely hamstringing changes that could or should be made to allow these classes to really have some honest retweaking done. And the humorous part in this is even with the current proposed changes they made to every class, they are not backwards compatible with the 2014 versions. Been lying about the game being backwards compatible. They have some of the same abilities, but things were rightfully changed in this version of the UA, and that immediately means this is a new edition, and having someone play a 2014 version at the same table as a sixth edition version would be so confusing to both players and DMs. One of the first thing that pops in my head reading over this package is that all subclasses start at third level, and not all of them get the same subclass features at the same level. So already it is not backwards compatible with the fifth edition. Even across the classes, they do not gain subclass features at the same levels. I get why they're trying to hold on to this so hard. Fifth edition has been a huge moneymaker for Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. Their new VTT has been built around it already. Drastic changes to the core mechanics means a ton of more work in the coding of the VTT. And that means hundreds of thousands of dollars to the already, if reporting is correct, astronomical cost of launching this VTT. They may have a tough time recouping those costs, but that's a discussion for another time. So as always, I would love to hear thoughts on the new classes, feats, weapon mastery, or spells below. I'm a huge fan of constructive criticism, so if you have a gripe, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how to fix it as well. Only through that process can real change happen. Not that I think anyone from Wizards of the Coast watches this channel, but hey, you never know. Shocking, shocking. I find it an odd choice to see a move back to short rest. When the last few books, it seemed clear that they were moving away from them in favor of PCs using the long rest mechanic more. Again, I really think this has a lot to do with the corner they're painting themselves into. This is another mark against balancing the classes and having them work with previous iterations. First and foremost, I did read over the 77 page Unearthed Arcana. I started to write a script on the changes to each class, but then I kind of stopped. The reason, well, most are underwhelming to be very honest. I gotta admit it, I'm underwhelmed. Watsi is so fixated on classes being backwards compatible, if there really is such a thing for an RPG, that they're just throwing out a lackluster package with more steps backwards than meaningful forward progress. I can only imagine how the design team is handling the scope of this project changing so drastically. What are you doing? Flipping the table. Do I think there are some fun ideas that can make characters much more interesting? Yes, of course. I can highlight several of them. And here we go. The Bard getting access to any of the three traditional lists for casting will really expand the RP and flavor of the character. They have some good base abilities and level up consistently. The subclasses are decent and fit well with the new character. Now I'm a fan of removing the self healing in favor of the changes to Bardic Inspiration overall, as it does move the class more to the support side of things. Clerics get the choice of being a cloistered cleric or a war priest. No wait, sorry, that's Pathfinder 2E. That's me! In D&D 5.5, they are a protector or theta merge. My bad. They've given a couple new uses for Channel Divinity, but those are very limited. So depending on your campaign, your mileage may vary a lot. Smite Undead is a fun ability, but again, uses your Channel Divinity, so it will be limited. Watsi has tried to make the Commune and Greater Divine Intervention work better, so time will tell. But I found that these are very niche instances. I don't know, giving Wish at 20th level may end up being a tad over the top, but remember, you need to take all 20 levels in Cleric. No multiclassing for you. Not for you! They did rework the spell list for the subclasses, and I generally like them. They've clarified a lot of gray areas in the rules from 2014 versions. So again, not bad. 
but it could have been better. One of the things to remember as well, when 5.5 comes out, it does not invalidate the previous subclasses. There will still be Twilight Clerics and other domains running around. Bounce still has not been addressed, but let's face it, you can type in best subclasses for any class in D&D and get a swath of videos from folks showing how and why they're overpowered on YouTube. Next up is the Druid, one that I'm currently playing and I think has actually some of the better improvements. Like the Cleric, there are two Primal Orders and one of them allows you to wear medium armor and use martial weapons, which is great for the Moon Druid as you get to keep your AC when you shift. You get Find Familiar and Wild Shape at second level. They do have the caveat that when you do shape, you only learn three. But honestly, my goblin's either an octopus, a dire wolf, or a raptor, and really, I'm fine with that. Wizards of the Coast added in the Elemental Fury and Improved Fury, which are fun additions to the druids. Druids in wild shape, mostly being the circle of the moon druid, can cast Abjuration Magic while in the form and apparently can talk. Do you understand the words coming out of my bill? Although I will miss playing my octopus charades with my group, I can live with it. As well, I can just tell them that I can't talk in animal form. It becomes an RP choice at that point. Overall, not a bad class. Again, I'm not sure how this is comparable or compatible of the 2014 version, but okay. All right, the next one, the monk. It is just so, so, so bad. It is so bad. There were really no improvements on it at all. Bumping the martial arts die by one type only nets about one damage per unarmed strike and it only works with unarmed strikes. They removed the short sword from the martial weapons. So now monks are cut off from a ton of weapon feats. They only get to use weapon mastery on simple weapons, which do cap at D6. So their choice to use a unarmed strike or the weapon. At higher levels, this means they're dropping a D8, a D10, or even a D12 for a D6 weapon with the mastery ability. That's not a great choice. If you wanna see some rants about it, go check out D&D Shorts or D4's collab with Treat Monk about it. They go into a huge line-by-line -line breakdown of the Unearthed Arcana playtest. I'll leave some links down below. The Paladin got a big old nerf with their smites. Now I'm on the fence about this to be very honest. I'm not a fan of cheesing the damage that the current Paladin lets you see if you crit first before stating you're applying your smite ability. Now, smites are a bonus action. So you hit, you crit, you roll damage, and then you can add your smite on top of it using your bonus action. So Paladin damage is gonna be lowered immensely with this change. Again, the 2014 version allows you to add a smite at will and with no limit per turn. This new Paladin is in no way backwards compatible to that. Oh, and smites only work on melee damage now. No ranged weapons. Kevin no Too bad if you were a paladin of a nature god or an elven god. They moved Leon Hands to a bonus action, which is nice, but you cannot smite now as it takes your action and a bonus action. I guess they really did not want a paladin to lay on hands in the same round as they are smiting, which pretty much is the same in 2014. They do get weapon mastery at first level and as a mechanic that does open a lot for PCs. Too bad the 2014 version does not have this, so technically a 2014 Paladin cannot use this feature. I'm so confused. So Channel Divinity is broken into short and long rest rules, again, departing from the previous design of long rest only abilities. Wizards of the Coast did tweak and improve some of the Paladinos, clearing up some rules ambiguities along the way, which is nice to see. The Ranger really did not have a lot of changes to be very honest. Weapon Mastery is kind of a new shiny mechanic that Wizards of the Coast is pushing, and there are some fun things with it. The sidebar in the UA shows a couple of things moved, a few things line up with the previous writings, like in Tash's Cauldron of Everything, and again, they have a 20th level feat like all other classes, because whoever multi-class a ranger anyway? Rogue is the last class on this list. So a reminder that the Barbarian, Fighter, Warlock, Sorcerer, Wizard, and Artificer are not included in this Unearthed Arcana. They rolled back changes from the previous Unearthed Arcana on the Rogue and added in a new feature. Uh, they reverted lots of abilities back to the 2014 levels as well. Cunning Strikes now remove a D6 from your sneak attack pool and add in an effect. I, I actually do kind of like that. Sneak Dice can get pretty out of hand and most Rogues can out damage any fighter any day of the week. At 14th level, there are more options at the cost of two three, or even six D6. They have some fun with the Arcane Trickster, and the Assassin wording has been fixed to give advantage on initiative instead of the worst mechanic in the game, surprise, which most tables forget about, 
or mess it up anyway. And the only time it ever comes up is pretty much when you have an assassin at the table. I am very, very sneaky, sir. At the end of the UA is a list of spells that have been altered or updated. I do like that Power Word Kill now does a default 12d12 necrotic damage if the target has more than 100 hit points. It was always such a metagamey thing. Players had to guess if the NPC had under 101 hit points, while DMs knew exactly how many hit points their players had. That's not fair. All in all, as I said previously, there are some good things that are in this, but overall, meh. Wizard of the Coast must really rethink what they want from this new edition of the game, and quick. While they continue to protest that this is not a new edition, the players have loudly spoken that they're just going to be calling this 5.5 or 6 edition. No amount of Pinkertons can stop everyone from doing this. They're in a crunch against time now. As I've stated on earlier videos, there's a long wait at the printers and it's not easy to get these things set and out the door. If they're looking at waves of releases for their books and likely want them all out before Gen Con, which is August 2024, then their window to mess around with this stuff is closing very fast. They would likely have to have this wrapped up by November. December is Christmas and New Year's, and then we're already into late January. If they want the PHB to be in stores by March of 2024, and no, I do not have any confirmation on any type of dates, but if they are staggering books by a couple of months, they will need to look at that time frame. I've seen this before when I had my game store. So this is the kind of time frame, just kind of seems logical to me. This UA goes into feedback, mid to end of July. They'll have to rework the monk. There's just no doubt in my mind that it needs a complete ground up rework. You suck, you jackass. Then they'll release the classes that were skipped this time. That puts them into August with the with an end in September for surveys. I don't think we'll see another playtest package after that unless it's something very small like a monk rework. And we still have not seen anything about the DMG or the monster manual. We do not know how or if they're reworking stat blocks or conditions, resistances of the monsters, etc. All we know is they're shifting the DMG chapters around and adding much needed information for dungeon masters to actually build encounters and run games. We know the monster manual is supposed to be a massive tome as well. Wizards is really in a bind. They took what could have been a great time to improve the game overall and just walked everything back. At this point, I would not even be surprised if this just does not become another Tasha's book instead. They have so much sunk into the VTT that major changes to the core game just will not happen. I truly believe the whole OGL debacle is a huge reason for this. They alienated a very large portion of their players and doing a full overhaul would likely lose them more players in the short term, even if it's healthier for the game in the long term. The corporate folks do not see a long-term goal, and that is to the detriment of the game. This could end up really biting them in the ass, something fierce, because if the classes are not much different, who wants to buy a new book? No, no, he's got a point. Their sales could tank the same way 4th edition did, and if the PHB does not do well, that will shake what little confidence that most DMs already have about purchasing the DMG and the Monster Manual. Remember that players normally never purchase these books. It's the DMs. If the players are fine with the current 5th edition classes, there's no need to spend nearly $200 USD, about 300 Canadian, on a new set of books. But it's so much money. With their push to digital copies, a DM can just purchase a PDF from DD Beyond and share it to their group and Wizards of the Coast sales dip again. Sure, they only have to manage the data transfers, so the profit on them is huge but the amount of sales drops and will not cover other costs. I don't mean to keep harping on Wizards of the Coast. I do love D&D, but I cannot see these changes spurring on a renaissance of players clamoring for the game. D&D seems to keep going through these phases of good additions then bad ones. This edition, I think, will be very lackluster. With other TTRPGs in the works, such as Critical Role jumping into their own rule system, Needy's moment to shine is fading. I know. Fade into the mist. And with the open RPG creative license just released from Paizo, this opens so many other games to really steer clear of Wizards of the Coast and the OGL debacle. Not to beat a dead horse, but we've not had any comment from Wizards of the Coast about what parts of this edition will be released in the Creative Commons or another OGL version. I guess only time will tell. As always, thank you so much for spending your time with me in your quest to become a better game master. If you're interested in more content, please like and subscribe below and click on the bell for notifications on new videos. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this latest Unearthed Arcana from Wizards of the Coast. What positives did you see with it? What did you hate about it? And why was it the monk? 
Oh, well. In the meantime, and in between time, that's it. Another Mythic episode. Thank you for watching. And may all our games be full of myth, mirth, and magic. 